Pro Taper Gold Shaper X. It's the auxiliary shaper from the Pro Taper Gold family of instruments. Notice it looks a little bit short to your eye, and it is. It's short so it can be introduced into narrow interocclusal space. A little better look at it closer in, we can see along the active portion, we can divide the instrument into thirds. And it's only 19 millimeters long from the D0 or tip of the instrument to where the shaft meets the handle. Back to the group of thirds. The last third, the more distal third of the instrument, is really not to cut. It's to follow along the glide path that you've either secured or it already exists. So this is the steering wheel on the SX instrument and I want to again stress it should be passive. Where we do most of our work is right in the body of that instrument in the middle one-third where what we have at diameter 6, 7, 8, and 9 we have cross sections of 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 0 0.9, and 1.1. What this means is we push the workload away from the more delicate tip of the instrument up to the bigger, stronger, and more efficient cutting blades. This instrument's used like a brush to relocate canals away from furcal danger, to flare the orifice, and to uh, facilitate all the subsequent steps of treatment. Let's look at some of the concepts we've just talked about. When we slide an instrument into a pulp chamber that is filled with a viscous chelator such as ProLube, Glide, or RC Prep, the instrument will slide into the orifice and oftentimes down to the body of the canal many millimeters, oftentimes to mid-root or at some instances the junction of the middle and the apical one-third. Obviously in shorter, wider, and straighter canals the instrument may want to go to length, but again the handle's off-axis so we're not going to play the curvature with as much competency and integrity than if we had the handle uprighted. So in these instances, just take what the canal will give you, push the stop down so we know the maximum depth where the file can be easily placed, and work it up and down in little short amplitude strokes. In this instance, you're refining, smoothing, and expanding the glide path. Now this instrument can be removed and we can place the working length on this file and transfer it onto Shaper X. Remember to irrigate and flush out all the viscous chelator and in comes Shaper X. It's not to cut towards its working end. Remember we want the workload to be pushed up to the bigger, stronger, and more efficient blades. We use it in a brushy motion and we intentionally brush to the outer wall. The name of the canal you're in is the wall to cut. So we're in the MB, we're cutting out towards the MB line angle. Notice how the instrument's loading up. The colleague can look at the instrument and see where the debris is to know exactly where they're cutting. Very quickly, in just a matter of a few seconds, we can have a really good shape already going in the body of the canal. So what this is, is a chance to relocate orifices that look closer to the furcoside concavity. When we look at histology from around the world, because of the awkward entry angle of the MBML system into the pulp chamber, they are originally a little closer to the furcoside concavity. So the brushing motion is done to deliberately move the canal away from furcal danger to the outer wall. This means we end up with more centered preparations between the mesial and distal dimensions of the root. This means we'll have stronger endodontically treated roots post-treatment. Mm -hmm.